So two ways we can accomplish this. First way is with a scan tool and then without a scan tool. Now, most of you have scan tools. You just want to make sure it can read live data. And this is something that I showed last month. This is a really nice tool. Hooks up to your Android, Apple device. I'll use an iPad in my case and do a screen record so you can see what I'm doing. This is around 100 bucks, but it's really a 50% dealer scan tool. I'll link the video below if you do want to check it out. So let's plug it into the port. So the OBD2 port on this vehicle is on the driver's side. Let me grab a light here for you guys. And just in case, if this is all new to you, right there. Every vehicle, 1996 and newer, will have that port. So we're plugged in. Now, let's turn on the ignition and I'll show you what you want to look for. So let me start screen recording. And what we want to look for it all depends on the sophistication of your code reader. If you're able to read the transmission fluid temp sensor, fantastic. If you can't, you do have another option. So let's go into this. Okay, enter. So we want live data. And what we're looking for is the intake air temp sensor. Now you want to do this when the vehicle is cold. Okay, so do it first thing in the morning, for example. Not the absolute pressure. We don't want that, the manifold absolute pressure. Intake air temp sensor. Okay, confirm. And we're at 22 degrees Celsius. Let me convert that. So 22 degrees Celsius is 72 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's see what the reading is for the transmission fluid temp sensor. Now, if your scan tool just does not have enough sophistication to dig up the temperature reading at the transmission, you may be lucky enough to retrieve that off the dashboard. Now, in this vehicle, I'm not sure if it's showing up on the camera or through the camera, but right now it's showing the temperature for the coolant. Oh, wrong button. That's a G meter, PSI. And right now we're at 68 degrees Fahrenheit for or at the transmission. Now this is why this matters and this is a very quick test you can do if you have a scan tool. The intake air temp sensor and the transmission fluid temp sensor should be within five degrees of each other if the vehicle is cold. It can even be seven degrees, but five degrees Fahrenheit is a very, very good rule of thumb. This vehicle has no problem. I'm just showing this as a how-to, but that's something you can quickly do and see if you do have a problem or maybe it's just intermittent. Now, there is one more thing we, we can do very, very quickly. And if this turns out to be on your vehicle, you check the temp sensor and you do what we're going to do right now, you found the problem. You can be done within 10, 15 minutes. Now, very quickly, your vehicle does not have to be up on wood cribs and really high off the ground. The only reason this vehicle is like this right now is because I'm about to do a clutch job and because it requires a lot of disassembly, I'm going through a, a couple of videos that I wanna shoot and just show you on how to do a few things. So, let me grab Okay, let me grab a wire cutter because I just stuck my head under here and realized something. Someone has been here before. All right. Right here is the transmission fluid temp sensor and it's zip tied. This pigtail, someone broke it. So let me, I have to cut that off. But what we're going to do is unplug it and then let's see what the reading is on the dash. Now for most vehicles, when you remove this sensor, it's going to drain the transmission fluid, okay? Also keep that in mind. So if, if you're overdue for a transmission fluid, a good time to do both at the same time. So let's do that. Just remove this. Okay, now let's see what the reading says. Okay, here we go. Let's see what's what here. All right, now look at the temperature sensor. Minus 36 degrees 
Fahrenheit. That is very, very good. Okay, so I had to pause there yesterday, so let's continue where we left off. Once you disconnect the harness connector and you see a change on the temp reading, that verifies that the wiring is good, that the PCM or the power control module is okay as well because this module is not only monitoring the sensor, but it's also feeding the info up to the dash. Everything is in good shape. So if we had a trouble code for the temp sensor, we can replace it and be done with it. But what if you do not have a scan tool, you cannot dig up the temperature reading at the sensor, what can you do? Well, to test this sensor is super, super easy with no fancy scan tools. So what we'll be using is a digital multimeter, an absolute must have. I've been showing this one for a couple of years here on the channel. I think it's like 25 bucks worth every dime. Now, in addition to the scan tool, I'm also using two wires, okay? With alligator clips on the ends. And at the end of the temp sensor, you'll find two prongs. You see those prongs? All that we're doing, because this is hard to see once we crawl underneath the vehicle, taking one lead, attaching it to one of the prongs, taking the other lead, okay, attaching it to the second prong. Super easy. So from underneath the vehicle, something like this, okay? Now the opposite ends, the opposite ends are going directly to the meter. So every multimeter, they come with two leads, a black lead and a red lead, okay? And on the multimeter, on the multimeter, there's a setting for ohms, okay? The omega symbol. So simply grabbing the leads from the temp sensor, one lead going to the black of the multimeter and the other one going to the red. Okay, that's all we're doing here. And now we should see an ohms reading, hold on. You see that? Now, that's a good sign that we have a reading here, but how do we know if this sensor is working correctly? So if you do this test and you don't see any reading whatsoever on the multimeter, make sure that your leads are hooked up correctly, but ultimately if you see nothing, or sometimes the reading will be ridiculously high. Very good indication that the sensor is bad, but you also want to check it. Two ways you could do this. Number one is leaving it, everything the way it is, as you just saw. And if it's safe to do so, turn on the vehicle. Let it warm up. And as the vehicle warms up, the transmission fluid is also warming, and that value should go down. Okay, that's one option. Option two is removing the sensor. So I have an extra one here. This is actually a coolant temp sensor, but ultimately it's the same thing. Super, super easy. It may be easier just to remove it, to be quite honest, but if you could do everything safely, just leave everything hooked up to the car, but watch this. So let's imagine this sensor is still attached to the vehicle. By the way, all that you do is use a wrench and just crack it loose. Very, very simple. So just hooking up the leads once again, and then grab yourself, see the reading? Grab yourself a hair dryer. You can use a match, you can use a lighter. I happen to have a, a little butane torch. What we're going to do is heat up the sensor. And again, this reading should go down. So here we go. Okay, see it going down? Now remove the heat and the reading should go back up. A little loose connection, but nonetheless, okay, that's it. It's this simple to test the sensor. So if you're doing this as the vehicle is running, once again, that value should go down. If it doesn't, you don't see a reading or the reading is just really high, the sensor is bad, just replace it. Now, the last thing to check is what if you have a trouble code? The sensor works. You don't have a scan tool. How do you know if the wiring is good? You can actually check and verify if power is getting to the sensor. So fortunately, this is the last test. And on the multimeter, you have a setting for volts. Just make sure it's on the DC setting. 
And the last thing I'll be using is a probe kit. These go for maybe 12 bucks or so, and you'll see why these are really, really handy. So one last time back in the vehicle, just turn on the ignition key. Always important to check the wiring because why waste your time, your money, and so forth if the sensor is good and maybe you just have a wiring issue. So here we have the harness connector that runs to the temp sensor, inserting the probe. A little trick with one hand here, there we go. Okay, so one lead going directly to the harness connector and then the black lead goes to ground, okay? This is perfect, right on the body. And we should see a reading, roughly five volts. Let me make sure you guys can see that without a glare. And there you go, you see that, five volts? That verifies that this is getting power. We have no wiring issues. So now I'm removing the probe from this left terminal. Oops, and I'm going to insert it into the other one and this will test for ground, okay? Now for ground, it's a little bit different. Leave that the way it is. On the multimeter, you want to find, hold on, make sure you guys can see this. You want to find the symbol. It looks like a Wi-Fi hotspot, okay? And what you want, what you're testing here is continuity. So ultimately you should hear an audible alert. So we're on the second terminal, this to ground, the black lead from, from the multimeter, and there you go. So that verifies 100% certainty we have no wiring issues. So I hope that's pretty simplistic to follow. Check the wiring, test the sensor. You'll know precisely what's going on. And wrapping it up, if you do need the sensor, my recommendation, buy genuine parts. Don't go some cheapo aftermarket, no name, off eBay, you're going to be hurting yourself in the long run. By genuine parts, you pay a little bit more generally, but you get the quality and it's what your car is built for. As always, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.